We're outside of Tupelo, Mississippi today, and there's an investigation going on into a possible mass burial of Civil War soldiers. Uh, the Calhoun home was the primary Confederate hospital here in the back. They treated probably over 500 casualties. We're thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of 30, 30 to 34, uh, not only Confederate, but Union soldiers that were buried here um, in the field behind us. History seekers will be coming back in a few months when the ground conditions are better, when it's not quite as wet as it has been here in the early part of the year. Hello from Tupelo, Mississippi. I'm Graham Osborne with the Bryce's Crossroads Foundation. And in the opening months of 2023, we brought you a video about the investigation into a Civil War burial plot from soldiers who had died at the Battle of Tupelo Harrisburg in 1864. Well, local enthusiasts and researchers and experts from all the South came back to Tupelo in the closing months of 2023 to continue the investigation into the Calhoun mass grave burial spot. For years, I drove from my home in Chickasaw County and I would notice uh, a tombstone there. For years, it just intrigued me. One day I stopped at Kelly's store to get a little snack and something to drink. And I said, I'm gonna go over there and read that stone. And I did. And I realized it was a Confederate uh, grave marker, D.D. Uh, D. Drake. I took a picture of it and on my social media page, I put a picture on there and lamented the fact that since the tombstone was on the back of the road ditch, that possibly the, the road ditch itself was across the grave. Mm -hmm. And I said, it was it's sad to see a uh, recent construction and development overtake these old cemeteries and, and on that post on the social media several area people commented on it they knew about it uh, they told me that the stone didn't really mark a grave it was moved out of the way for agricultural practices from a nearby farming operation i was very much relieved at that but um I, but it sparked enough interest to where several people who were really into the historical preservation of these monuments and cemeteries and gravestones contacted me and indicated an interest in starting up a group and i would very much appreciate it if i was a member of that so I, I've, I've been happy about that this is a project where they didn't really have any information to start with there was no cemetery there. It was just an open field. And I was told that there were soldiers, we believe, buried in this field. I was also told that there was a large tree that had been in this field at one point. I was amazed when I asked, and God helps me do this. This is a gift, this is not me. And I asked to be led to this one soldier, D.D. D. Drake, it was led to that soldier. And then I, the first year, I think I found 11 soldiers. Circumstances of how it became lost was, was kind of interesting to me. You know, that's something you don't hear about a lot. You know, usually when we're looking for a site like this, they just knew it was the general area. Uh, but this, it, it sounds like from talking to everybody, was marked originally and then a farmer decided he wanted to remove the headstone so we're actually going back refining these and we we knew the general area which helped us narrow it down it means you're not going across a 20 acre field with a push mower essentially uh so you know but it, it's it's not an everyday time everyday project you get to come out and do something like this but but it's very rewarding and i think it's a very worthwhile project that these soldiers memory will be preserved and this will be marked and 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 uh, basically protected. So last time we were out here, the, the field was partially covered in water, in standing water. So, uh, and our radar is not, uh, is not waterproof. So we didn't wanna, you know, you don't wanna go out and burn up a five, $10,000 piece of equipment. So we decided we'd come back. Uh, and also too, when the ground's super saturated, it can make some of the uh, some of the images we're getting back not as clear. So that was one of the things we wanted to go back. We want to pin down exactly where it is, and so that we know with you know reasonable degree of certainty that we've marked the correct spots and make sure that we haven't missed anybody. That's important too. Make sure that you know there's not one soldier outside of that fence that we couldn't see last time because of the water. So.
the burial sites that um, are notorious, it's not legend, it's fact, um, that are missing um, and unidentified at this time um, as to where their location is a really interesting aspect and one worthy of um, trying to pursue to locate in some way to preserve and memorialize the sites of both Confederate and Union soldiers who were buried after that after the Battle of Harrisburg. I haven't heard a definite number, but like you said, I know that I've combed through the collection at Special Collections at Mississippi State, and I have come across a document that described some of the Union families coming down and in reinterring their relatives' remains back up north somewhere. We use uh, ground penetrating radar and radar typically picks up metallic objects. However, this uh, system will actually show voids in the ground. It will show disturbances. So it's, it's really good at finding graves. Uh, it can be a little more difficult when you're finding graves that don't are the people were not buried in caskets, traditional caskets, uh, but it will still show the void. Well, a Mississippi registered professional engineer and land surveyor. Graduated uh, Bachelor of Science Civil Engineering Mississippi State in 1980 and I've been either practicing or teaching for the past 44 years, 43 years. I've been using global positioning system or GPS is what it's called for about 14 years now and uh, this system is new. It's a uh, you know it's a recent name brand It's called a Javat system. They're based in Rover and it's got a cellular network on it where I have SIM cards in both units and they talk to each other according to the cellular network. So the data that I collect, I can put that in a file that is able to be utilized by other people who are needing to locate what we have found. And I have located those marks of uh, the possible places of internment for Civil War soldiers. I've located uh, several areas and with that information, uh, I can pass it on to the Historical Society people and the Archives and History people so they can come out here with their equipment and go find and stand on the exact same spot that I took the location from. Thanks for watching our video update about the Calhoun Mass Grave investigation. Please stay tuned in the coming months for exciting news about a permanent reminder for the community here about this important history in North Mississippi. Until next time, goodbye from Tupelo.